Howdy YouTube, I've got an ax to grind with you people. Yeah, don't worry. I've also got an aluminum bar, a piece of regular old mild steel, some brass, and even a big old hunk of glass. Now why am I doing this? Well, it's because I want to explore the realities of the differences between these two things right here. What these are, are the two commonly available flavors of grinding stone that you can get for a Dremel tool. In my left hand here is the good old aluminum oxide stone, which is uh, cheap, readily available everywhere, but ostensibly is pretty much limited to grinding on steel. And in my right hand is a silicon carbide stone, which is at least twice as expensive as this guy, but supposedly has the ability to grind on things that are both harder, like ceramic and glass, and softer, like aluminum and brass, than this guy. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to stick both of these things brand new under the microscope and show you what the grain structures look like. Then we're going to use them both to grind on these various materials, see what the aftermath looks like up close. First up though our trip under the looking glass is the aluminum oxide stone. Now what you'll read online is that compared to the silicon carbide, the aluminum oxide is a big blocky stone that gouges out the material it's working with rather than cutting it with a sharp edge. And you can kind of see that if you look right here along the edge of this grinding bit. There's definitely a, a wavy bumpy edge to this brand new stone that shows you kind of the relatively big pieces of grinding material that are in this wheel. Right? Comparatively speaking, this silicon carbide bit, while not perfectly smooth, it is a grinding wheel after all, you can see clearly has much, much smaller pieces in the material and overall a smoother edge, at least to the brand new surface. Well, this isn't gonna be the greatest scientifically controlled test ever, but hopefully we'll get the idea. Uh, I've got my mild steel as the starting point because according to all the literature, either of these stones should work just fine on this material. I've got this end marked with an A for the aluminum oxide stone, this end S for silicon carbide. I'm gonna set the Dremel tool on a medium speed, three-ish, and uh, spend 30 seconds grinding the first half inch across the top of this piece of angle with both stones. And so then what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna be able to look at the steel and see which stone made you know, better progress or a nicer surface. Then we'll be able to put the bits under the microscope and see if they wear any differently. Okay, first up is the aluminum oxide stone. You can clearly see that the edge of that stone is not as perfectly straight as it used to be. Uh, with just 30 seconds of grinding on mild steel, we already do see some wear of the stone. I mean, it's to be expected, these things are consumables. But overall, it doesn't look too bad. There aren't any huge gouges out of it. There's only a tiny little bit of discoloration. And here's the silicon carbide stone. As you might expect on a material like mild steel, which isn't hard enough to cause this stone to fracture any more than any other stone, the harder material has held up just a little bit better. The silicon carbide stone is, for all intents and purposes, just as flat as it was when we started. Okay, let's try the same thing with the much harder tool steel of this uh, hatchet head. We've got brand new stones in the Dremel tool. We're gonna do the same 30 second test. Okay, well no surprises back under the microscope here. Steel is pretty much steel from a grinding perspective. The tool steel is harder, so probably if we measured these things down to the thou or ten thou, you'd find that we wore away the stone a little bit more with the harder steel. But the wear is real even and the stone is still perfectly usable at this point. There's not a thing wrong with the cheaper aluminum oxide stone. And of course, likewise with silicon carbide, this is steel, it's only 30 seconds of grinding. That stone might as well be brand new. It still has tons of life left in it. There's gonna be no appreciable difference between this and the aluminum oxide. Next up on the list is brass. Let's see what happens with this. Okay, this is the aluminum oxide stone after grinding on the brass. And while we can see that it's not appreciably worn, which you would expect with such a soft metal, there is considerable contamination of the stone. There's a lot of brass stuck in the uh, spaces and cracks and crevices of this stone. 
And uh, this is after only 30 seconds of grinding on very thin brass. So you can see it's not going to take too long before this stone is essentially going to be uh, encased in thin brass and won't be grinding anything. And here's the silicon carbide. And despite what the articles online would have you believe about uh, silicon carbide with its sharp grains being able to cut rather than just mush through soft metals, uh, this thing clearly is equally contaminated with, uh, with brass. It really hasn't fared much better than the aluminum oxide. And um, I can't really see any advantage to using this stone uh, over the cheaper aluminum oxide if you're grinding brass. Given the results we got with the soft brass, I'm not expecting going even softer to aluminum is going to make things better, so I'm cheating. Uh, instead of going through more and more and more new stones, uh, I'm going to save myself a couple of bucks and I have just freshly dressed the ones that we used on the brass. So they're clean and they're straight and they're basically as good as new except they just happen to be a little bit smaller. So let's take to this aluminum stock and see if the expectations that things just get worse continue to pan out or if somehow the silicon carbide turns out to be uh, magic if you go soft enough. <laughs> Well, here's the aluminum oxide stone. Looks more like a piece of abstract art than a grinding stone. Just like with the brass, uh, the soft metal doesn't frankly grind that well. Uh, it mostly just scoops off of there in soft clumps and sticks to all of the bumpy surfaces of the wheel. Okay, and here's the silicon carbide stone, and it clearly did not fare any better at all. In fact, I, you might be able to make the case that this is worse. So if you ask me the classic online theory that because the silicon carbide stone has sharper grains that can cut the metal instead of gouging it, that you can use these on softer metals is bogus. Okay, the last material we're going to try is glass. Now this stuff is way, way, way harder than any of the metals, including the tool steel. So it's going to be by far the hardest on the grinding stones. I'm going to make two changes to procedure for this particular test. Uh, when you're grinding on really, really hard things, higher speeds are recommended for the tool. So I'm going to crank the Dremel all the way up to 11 for this particular one. And also I'm going to grind for a full minute uh, because again, the glass is so hard that frankly in 30 seconds, I don't think you're going to be able to see what we did. Okay, well, if we take a real close look at these two grinds in the glass, you can see the one on the left, which was the aluminum oxide bit, uh, actually ground significantly more away from the glass than the silicon carbide did in the same one minute period. However, if we come over here and we take a look at the silicon carbide bit, we see that it doesn't look like it did anything. It, it looks almost exactly like the brand new bit. Um, it's not obviously worn and it's not plugged up with anything. The aluminum oxide bit clearly did not fare as well. Um, it has bits of glass dust embedded in it and I, the stone is at least 50% worn away. Um, so while this thing was in fact in one minute able to remove more glass than the silicon carbide stone, um, probably two minutes is about all you would get out of it and then your stone would be gone. So there you go YouTube. Dremel grinding stones, both under and over glass. We've hit the 10,000 subscriber number, for which I thank each and every one of you very much. If you're not one of the cool kids, you can join up by hitting this button right, right here. It's just one click, it's easy. And of course, as always, any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll get to them just as soon as I can. Hundreds of other Dremel accessories that would probably be pretty cool to stick under the microscope, but it's gonna have to wait for another day. Till then, you stay safe, YouTube, and thanks for watching.